The episode kicks off in the midst of the Dominion War, where things are going badly. So badly, Cisco may have been drinking because he has to ask the computer what day it is. This is good Romulan ale. It must have allowed me to time travel. He's confessing in his log about how this all started, with the posting of the list of the dead or the missing, to show how important it is to end the war, which isn't easy because the Romulans have decided to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. No surprise there, they're so focused inward nobody even knew what they looked like until a century ago. Doing nothing is basically their default national position. Well, Sisko plans to change their minds. He's going to bring them into the war on their side, no matter how many pointy-eared heads he's going to have to shove into a toilet. But as Dax makes him realize, the Romulans just have no incentive to join up unless they have proof that the Dominion is a threat. This makes him turn to Garrick. After all, you've got to get up pretty early in the morning to outfox the Dominion, and Garrick never, ever sleeps. But Garrick warns him, if we do this, we've got to go all in. It's down to the wire and time for the Hail Mary, because the bases are loaded and the Dominion's running a full court press that'll knock them for six. If the heavy hitters drop the ball, we'll be stuck behind the eight ball. I got a sports thesaurus for my birthday. Well, bad news soon comes. Word is that the Dominion has seized control of Beta Z, homeworld of Waxana Troy, and seizing control of their vast storehouses of smug. Well, it's soon followed by worse news. All Garrick's contacts on Cardassia Prime are dead now. But not to worry, he has his own plan. If getting the real evidence is impossible, we could just manufacture the evidence ourselves, which would be good because everyone insists we don't manufacture things anymore. Sisko's uncomfortable, but with the stakes so high, Garrick suggests they contact Vrenak, famously appearing in a meme thanks to this episode, which is only improved by the fact that the actor who plays him is Mr. McHattie, which sounds like the name of a puppet who teaches children about the post office. Anyway, Garrick's plan is to fake a recording of a secret Dominion plot to invade Romulan space. And if such a strong pro-Dominion senator can be convinced, then the rest of the Senate is going to vote for war. Of course, a fake demands a forger, so Sisko has to convince Gowron to spring one to make their present for the Romulans. He says he'll stay in his quarters, but the thing about criminals is they're not terribly trustworthy, so instead he takes a detour into Quark's, where he proceeds to get plastered, tries to accost a Dabo girl, and then stabs Quark when he tries to protect her. The only way to keep this quiet is for Sisko to persuade Quark to not press charges, which delights Quark. He rises above expectations to intervene to protect someone in distress, and Sisko is reduced to making a bribe to cover up the crimes of an attempted murderer. Throw in the fact that Sisko has a goatee, and it wouldn't be surprising to learn we're in the mirror universe right now. After that problem, the guy who is selling the official Cardassian data rod, that's what they need to back up their claim that this is an official government record, you can't exactly put it on a flash drive and expect Vrenak to accept it, this guy wants biomimetic gel, a very dangerous and carefully controlled substance. It's the biological equivalent of asking for a few hundred kilos of plutonium. You're not going to be doing anything good with that. Uh, but then again, Sisko's probably the last Starfleet officer to pass judgment on someone dropping bioweapons on a planet. Just ask the Maquis. So reluctantly, he has to go along with it. But it's worth it to have our fishy friend encode the special tailored forgery on it, and just in time for Vrenak to arrive. Vrenak's cloak shuttle arrives in secret, where he proceeds to act like the most arrogant jerk you've ever met, assuming that you never saw Season 1 Will Riker. Sisko tries to convince him, but Vrenak isn't buying what he's selling. So Sisko says, if you don't believe me, you can just inspect my rod. Ahem. <clears throat> So Sisko shows Vrenak the fake invasion from a fake meeting, faked onto a data rod that Vrenak dismisses as a fake. And a thousand something awful gags are born. Sisko's distraught and then shocked to learn that Vrenak's shuttle blew up on the way home, after Garrick had been on board supposedly looking for useful secrets in the war effort. Well, Sisko can put two and two together, and so heads to Garrick's shop where he can put fist and face together. But Garrick points out that the deaths of Vrenak and the Forger yeah, Geirk tied up that loose end too, will save the entire Alpha Quadrant because all the evidence will tell the Romulans that the Dominion was behind the attack to try to destroy the proof that they're going to invade. And in private, a reluctant Sisko says he'll have to learn to live with what he did here. Of course, I know two guys who won't be able to live with it, will they? I think it's safe to say that there is no single episode more polarizing for Star Trek fans than this one. 
For many, it is all that is good about DS9 in a single 45 minutes. Morally nuanced, with the kind of humanization and character evolution that so marked the series. For others, it represents the worst betrayal of Gene Roddenberry's vision of a future where humans are virtuous creatures that hold their principles as sacrosanct. Now, I understand the reasoning of the latter, but I personally lean more towards the former. The episode is a tour de force for two accomplished actors with great material to work with, playing engaging characters. Sisko is a man of presence, integrity, and devotion. Garrick is the best example I can think of of Churchill's mystery wrapped in an enigma. As I've said in my video looking at the character, we've no idea how much, if any, that he told Sisko throughout this episode was true. His dead operatives could very well be alive and well. His last minute pivot could have been the plan that he's been working on for months. Sisko thought Garrick was working for him, but the reality is it was the other way around. Garrick even told Sisko at the beginning that it would be a messy and bloody business. He warned him, but Sisko didn't seem to realize what that meant. The story itself has no real action to it, but it still has an intensity to it. You feel rushed along by the tide of events as much as Sisko is. Every scene lasting just long enough to make its point and then moving on to the next to just keep it moving. And the juxtaposition of the list with the news that Senator Vrenak was killed offers a subtle counterpoint. If the war is lost, all the names on that list die for nothing. The death of Vrenak means something, though, and so consequently, all the other names on that list will mean something, too. With the Dominion War events from earlier in the season still fresh in the viewers' minds, it's easy to see why Sisko is willing to entertain the ideas that he does, to be compelled by the evils of war to ultimately walk down a path of evil himself in order to fight it. Because even though Sisko concludes the episode with the remark that if he had to do it all over again, he still would do it the same way, it doesn't change what this episode is. You see, the beliefs of the Federation are just that. Beliefs. Decisions of what is and isn't morally right. That is what Sisko's entire framing of the episode provides. The true thing that's going on here. This isn't Ben Sisko telling of how he saved the Federation. This is Ben Sisko's confession. Ben Sisko's admission that he sinned against the principles of the Federation and is trying to find absolution for himself. His conclusion isn't that it wasn't wrong, but rather he can live with the guilt of doing what was wrong. The first person telling of this episode is what illustrates this. Sisko shows the personal agony of having his desire to save lives on one side and the necessity to do wrong to achieve it on the other. Sisko believes what he did was evil, but also that it was a necessary evil. DS9 delivers an anti-war message by showing the cost of war, whether it's human lives, such as in the siege of AR-558, or the price that it demands of one soul. Okay, awards time. Meme fodder. And every one of them was earned by that performance. Striptease. Sisko bears his soul by taking it off. The sound of one fist clapping. Sisko does this to people a lot. I expect this to pop up pretty much every time there's a DS9 episode. And finally, Taylor X Machina. That's our show. Next time, things heat up over at Voyager.